headed to a nearby cookery school, which would be the arena for our bake-off. So, Otis, have you ever made a biscuit before? I mean, how hard can it be? You mix the ingredients together, slap it all in the oven, bake, then eat. OK, so you really haven't made a biscuit. Well, I've watched some online videos. Something tells me I may be on to a winner today. Time to get baking, Otis. Here are the ingredients. I've got plain flour, golden syrup, golden caster sugar, ground ginger and butter. Butter is in the fridge. Ouch. Hard butter out of the fridge isn't ideal for making dough, unless you have one of these. The Breville Heat Soft. The clue is in the name, because this handheld mixer can blow warm air over the mixing blades, gently softening the butter, which is much better than nuking it in the microwave, turning it into a liquid. While Otis gives his butter a blow dry, I load my ingredients into my multifunctional mixer. The Kenwood Cooking Chef XL. It may not be one for the budget baker, but it has a whole host of clever tricks up its blades, which means minimal input from me. So mine actually measures as I put stuff in there. I just need to press start and leave my mixer to it. Hands free, Otis. Yes, all right. I literally am just standing here. After about five minutes of blowing... Here we are, we're there now, look. My butter is softening and creaming with the sugar. No such guesswork on my side of the kitchen, OD. I've got a little handy timer on here so I know exactly how long I've mixed my mixture for. I'm just, I'm just going by look, feel and intuition. <laughs> Which you have very little of, yes. so <laughs> good luck with that. Luck? Who needs luck when you've got some of the best baking tech in the biz? Although, to turn my mix into dough... What do you do? Clump that. it. Clump it. I'm going to need to get my hands dirty. I'm doing it, look, I'm doing it! Next, it was time to give my ginger biscuits a little zhuzh using a patterned rolling pin. Here we go. <laughs> e, will you look at that? Biscuits cut. They look really professional. Thank you. It's time to get them in the oven. 180 degrees centigrade or 160, fan-assisted, as they say on all cookery shows. Probably. Meanwhile, back at Barrett's worktop, my Kenwood has done all the mixing for me. And forget about fancy rolling pins and complicated cooking instructions. I'm going to be using the Nutty Maker... No oven. ..to cook my ginger biscuits. No oven. This not only shapes my ginger biscuits, but also cooks them in around three minutes. So oh, wow. it's super quick. Granted, that three-minute bake is partly down to my dough balls being on the small side, but this challenge is all about quality, not quantity. Squish it down. Squish. While Georgie bakes or toasts or whatever she's doing, my ginger treats are ready for their grand reveal. Are you ready? What are they going to look like? Oh, no, the print's gone. The print's gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're beautifully shaped. Talking of which, time to check on my itty-bitty bickies. Right, let's have a little look. Oh, well, they are small. It's a ginger wafer. All that's left is to leave our creations to cool. You're not meant to eat it yet. And get ready to bake our second batch, this time to see how tech can give our baking some flair. On your marks, get set, dough. Georgie, what are you making? I'm making shortbread, which I love. Yep. Covered in chocolate, which I love. And I'm going to shape it in the iconic logo of The Gadget Show. As this was a tech-based baking challenge, I had taken the liberty to 3D print my very own biscuit stamp, complete with bespoke logo. Beat that, Odie. I am making a biscuit for tech lovers and gadget geeks. By tech, with tech, for tech. I, too, decided to make a Gadget Show-themed biscuit, but who needs stamps? When you can print the Gadget Show logo onto edible paper using edible ink. But first, we needed to make some more dough. Ah! Which Otis was still trying to get to grips with. Yeah. My trusty mixer, however, didn't miss a beat. So my dough's ready. After a little more hands-on love and attention, my dough was ready too. Should we roll and cut? Uh, well, you can roll and cut. I'm going to push and squeeze. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> I have a biscuit press. The Mercato Biscuit Press lets you literally press biscuits in up to 20 designs and in two sizes. And so what I do is I just fill the tube with my dough. And once I've done that, 
and then press out my biscuits. Is that it? Oh, ready? Okay. Is this one going to be bigger? This one should be bigger. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is honestly the smallest biscuit I've ever seen. Hold on a minute. Says the person who's made ginger What's biscuits that? for borrowers. And I mean that's only expanded because it's had time. After Otis got the hang of it. Boom. Okay, yeah, that's bigger. Let's go. And I gave Georgie some rolling advice. You got, you got a hole there. A couple of cracks there, look. I got onto the task of cutting out my biscuits and decorating them with my fancy cookie stamp creator. Ta da! Georgie's are looking good, but happily, so is my second tray of printed biscuits. Otis, they're so much better. They are, aren't it's they? It's like you're a professional baker. Yeah. Right, should we get them in the oven? Good idea. Ten minutes later, our buttery biscuit bases are ready for filling and decorating. Yes. I've got layers in mine, a jam layer, so I'm going to be using this, which is the Ball Jam Maker. The Ball Fresh Tech Jam makes jam, jellies and chutney. It automatically controls temperature and, apparently, can make a tasty jam in as little as 21 minutes. So, after mashing my strawberries, I yeah. tip them into the jam maker, select jam, press enter, and off it goes. Twisty turny. Yeah, twisty turny. But what does every twisty turny jam need? Lots of sugar. Your teeth hurting yet? I know, it's a huge amount of sugar. Well, Otis, I see all that sugar and I raise you some chocolate, which, after melting it, thanks to the all-singing, all-dancing Kenwood, a mixer that also heats. That is impressive, don't you think? Yeah. Will be generously coated onto my bespoke bickies. And with my jam also finished... Oh, the beeps! All I needed to do was fill my biscuits and stick on the pièce de résistance, my printed edible logo. And after a strawberry-flavoured finishing touch of my own, thanks to a candy writing pen... How's it going, Georgie? It's actually very enjoyable. Yeah. My decorated biscuits came out pretty well too, don't you think? That may be, Georgie, but are they good enough to beat my creations? To find out, we've invited along an esteemed judge, Max versus Food, a biscuit-eating world champion, so knows what a good bicky tastes like. But our challenge is not yet complete. Come here. There's more. Because what is a biscuit without a cup of tea? Indeed. How can we expect Max to nibble our bickies without having somewhere to dunk them? So, before he tucks in, it's time for some techie tea. And I'm up first with the tea maker from Sage. Three scoops of tea? It may look like a normal kettle, but have you ever seen a kettle do this? The Sage automatically dunks your tea leaves and changes water temperature based on a selection of presets. Look at that lovely, rich colour of my cup of tea. All that's left to do is pour. Mine's not quite as automated as yours. This kettle is from Brevi, or Breville. Breville. If you grew, if you grew up where <laughs> I did. My Breville has LED lights hidden inside the kettle, which change colour depending on the temperature. Oh, look, look, it's gone red. To brew my tea, I have a gadget which definitely wins best name of the day, the Brudini. So just one scoop per cup. That goes in there. I top up one cup's worth. Once my cup is brewed, you place it on top of your cup. Oh, wow. To release... Oh, you better stop it. I've overdone it, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> hey? So, with biscuits lovingly crafted and teas lovingly brewed, it was crunch time. And Max is starting with... my ginger beauties. They're a bit small. That may be, but what about the all-important snap? Oh, that snack. sounds that good. Was, that was actually quite a decent because snack. They're, it's because they're small, they've got that crisp to it. OK, so then t taste. Yeah, they're a bit hard, but uh, not too bad. Not exactly a slam dunk, Georgie. Now for Max to tuck into some real biscuits. Obviously a lot bigger. Yes. Too bad. Biscuit size. Mmm. OK, so no snap there. Yeah. Mmm. Nice, gingery, more buttery. Eat the whole thing, dude. Just enjoy it. Sounds like I'm in trouble. So on appearance, snap and taste, this round goes to Otis. Yes. So despite an unusually understated reaction and bendy biscuits, Otis takes round one. 
Next, our gadget show themed creations, and once again, I'm first. It's a delicious shortbread dipped in dark chocolate with a strawberry piping on top. Yeah, the pattern looks really, really good. It's obviously the gadget show's logo. Get some of the chocolate in there, get some of the strawberry in there. He's got all of it in there, though. Either biscuits are really good. So, a big thumbs up for Georgie, but I'm not worried. What's on top? Because that's. Okay, so that's edible paper. Um, and it's also got edible printed ink wow. on it. I didn't even think you could do that. Yes, you can. So it's like a jam sandwich biscuit with a tech bit. It's the appearance, I really like it. A huge tick for my biscuit's design, but what about its taste? Mmm, the jam is really good. The jam's good, isn't it? The I think the jam really might good. actually be the best part. Oh, it's going to be hard judging. I think I'm going to go for the biscuit of this one. Yes. OK. Although, I would say that your jam was exquisite. Thank you. Jammy Otis, but not jammy enough. <laughs> Round two goes to me, making it one point apiece. So now on to the tiebreaker teas. Starting with my sage tea maker's brew. OK. Tastes like tea. That's good. That's a good, good that's a, Off to a good start. A nice bit of faint praise for you there, Georgie. Let's see if my cuppa from the Brudini can do any better. So this one definitely tastes like it's been brewed for longer. I don't really know if I like that, though. Time to cue some suspenseful music, methinks. Whoa, whoa, cliffhanger! I know. I really thought we could add to the drama by revealing the results here in the studio. You're leaving me hanging. What happened? I can confirm that. My tea won the final round, meaning I won the baking Charlotte. Which is so annoying because he's a really bad baker. I am it was not. Only the tech that got you through. I that. am not a bad baker. I'm a good baker, capable baker. Thank you very much. I do so at home.